All right, this is pre-calculus 3.2 section, and we're going to be um, looking at linear models, building linear functions from data. Try this again. Going a little slow. Okay, draw and interpret scatter diagrams. Love this. The data listed in table six represents the apparent temperature versus the relative humidity in a room whose actual temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So we got humidity and we got temperature. So that creates these data points. We're going to draw a scatter diagram by hand, treating relative humidity as the independent variable, which means it goes on the x-axis. We're going to use a graphing utility to draw the scatter diagram, and then we're going to describe what happens to the apparent temperature as the relative humidity increases. So drawing a scatter diagram by hand, it's going to look like this, where you have your humidity on the x-axis and your temperature on the Y. In the graphing calculator, it looks somewhat like this. It has a little point. You have to adjust your scale so that um, X scale is from 0 to 10 counting by, I mean, um, 0 to 100 counting by tenths. And Y scale is from 62 to 78. And here we count by twos. As the relative humidity increases, the temperature also increases. How hard was that? Easy, right? All right, so we're going to take a look um, at linear and nonlinear relations. I know it seems crazy, but we're going to speak it out loud. Um, scatter plots that trend upward or they trend downward are linear relationships. Um, scatter plots that increase and decrease, increase and decrease, um, are nonlinear scatter plots. Or like the population growth kind of looking scatter plot, the exponential. Okay. Determine whether the relationship between the two variables is linear or nonlinear. So we look at A and we say that it's consistently decreasing, so it gets to be linear. We look at B, it's decreasing here, but increasing here, so we say that's nonlinear. We look at C, oh, he was a nonlinear case. And D, hmm, we're increasing, but we've got that kind of curve going on right here. So we're going to say that's nonlinear because if you look at increases at a quicker rate as you get bigger x values. Okay, so we're going to create a linear model given the data. So one thing we know is if we establish that it's a linear model, if we find the y-intercept and the slope between two of the points, then we can make an equation. So we're going to select two points and find an equation of a line containing the points. So we're going to pick 10, 65, and 70, 73, even though this, is, this one is highlighted. So we're actually picking 80, 74, so please ignore that. Not correct. All right, so we're going to subtract the y's, 74 minus 65, and then subtract the x's, 80 minus 10. And we get 9 over 70. So if we plug that into our point slope formula, 
we take our first coordinate, 10, 65, put 65 in for the y and 10 in for the x, and 9 seventieths in for the slope. We get y equals 9 seventieths x plus 446 over 7. Nice little linear model. And when you graph that linear equation, it kind of looks like this. And if you see, for the most part, it gets really close to each of the data points. All right, now we're going to put it in the hands of the graphing calculator to find the line of best fit. So we're going to use the data from the previous model and find the line of best fit. When you do this on your calculator, you use the um, linear regression function. So you put your data, you use linear regression, and it gives you the slope and the y-intercept. And then you can see the line of best fit. We graph it on the um, in y equals. And then interpret the slope. Remember the slope is 0.1209. And it means that the temperature rises 0.1209 degrees for every 1% increase in humidity. And then use the line of best fit to predict the apparent temperature when the actual temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit and the relative humidity is 45 degrees. So we plug 45 in for our x value and we get 69.8. I'm going to show you how to do this because I'm not a big fan of the graphing calculator. I actually like the online tools better, so I'm going to show you, if you don't have a graphing calculator, how you can do this at home. So what I did is I typed in linear regression calculator, and I just picked this one. It wants me to enter my x and my y values. So I've done that just copied um, my coordinate points in here. I'm going to submit my data. And if you notice, I get the same linear regression equation as the graphing calculator. Um, one thing I like about this one is that we can also plug in 45 for x, and it'll calculate out the y value. So that is how I would calculate that.